Setting up a grow tent is not rocket science, and it should be easy. Unfortunately, most of the instructions included with grow-related equipment suck, and I made this video in response. This setup applies to practically every grow tent kit, including VivoSun, Mars Hydro, AC Infinity, Spider Farmer, and all the generics that exist. It's broken down into parts, so check the description if you already have some parts set up. The order in which I'm gonna assemble is the tent, lights, then ventilation. Assembling a grow tent consists of setting up a frame and placing a mylar cover on top of it. It's basically a vinyl box with highly reflective material on the inside and black fabric on the outside. A tent is a tent for the most part, and the variance in quality is minor. They either have snap-click poles or plastic corners, and the only thing I recognize as poor for some tents is snagging zippers or mylar that splits into layers. Now, always assemble the tent in the room you're placing it in, because most tents won't fit through standard doorways. I always end up assembling the top and bottom square sections of the frame first and then adding the four vertical poles to connect them. The most important thing is to make sure that all the poles are all the way in. So make sure they click or apply a ton of pressure if they're plastic corners. Depending on the height of your room, you may have to assemble the frame in its upright position. Once your frame is assembled, you want to roll out the cover on the floor with the reflective side facing up and slide the frame into the tent. If you have a lot of space, the easiest way to do this is by placing the frame on top of the longest side of the tent, going inside the frame and pulling all of the other sides of the cover over the frame. It will be difficult and you may have to pull really hard. If it feels impossible, Chances are some of the poles are not as tight as can be, so double check. Once the frame is covered, stand the tent upright and install the spill tray. Each corner of the spill tray is either velcroed or tied to a vertical pole on the corner and gravity will naturally let it fall down. Last thing to do is put your hanging poles in and you should have two, one with the taller hook on the end. To install them, put the one with the smaller hook up on a diagonal above the two side poles, then rotate it until both hooks are over the frame. Then do the same for the other hanging pole so those two poles intersect. These can be used to hang your ventilation system, which we'll get to later. Part two, lights. You should always choose a light that factors in the size of your tent because you don't want to have too little light for your plants. The best lights have a dimmer, an LM301B or LM301H diodes, and you'll also need a timer or timed surge. Installing the lights is best done with rope clip hangers because you'll have the flexibility to raise or lower your lights. When you bring the lights closer to your plants, you're able to dim your lights, which in turn saves electric. For almost all lights, there should be a hole on each corner. Unfortunately, most lights only come with one or two rope clip hangers, which is absolutely unstable for heavy lights. I highly recommend purchasing four for any light that is 200 watts or more. The first thing you want to do is place your light on the floor in the center of your tent in the orientation that you'll be hanging your light. Factor in where your power line is so that you can have the line exit your tent as efficiently as possible. Next, grab a rope clip hanger and clip the clip that's attached to the pulley onto each of the four corners. Now, hold down the tab on each pulley to release as much rope as possible making sure you don't release all of it. So when you're using the rope clip hangers, there's two different setups. You could take these two clips and hang them on this right pole, and then these two clips, and then hang them on this left pole, which is going to be the first setup. Or the second setup would be 
these two clips on the back hanging on that back pole and then these two clips one and two hanging on this front pole up here once each line is long enough take the clips without the pulleys and push them behind the top pole pull them back down and clip it back onto themselves once all the clips are secured on the top poles, you could raise your lights by pulling each loose rope one at a time. Be gentle with this and rotate and pull each corner one by one until the light is the level you want. Now plug in your light and turn it on and put a thermometer on the floor. Close the tent and wait at least an hour to determine what the internal temperature of your tent is, and this will determine how you'll be setting up your inline fan and carbon filter. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're assuming you only have one fan and carbon filter in your setup. There are three different types of setups that apply to every single situation, and we're gonna teach you all three versions. Timestamps are in the description, so please skip to the version that fits your needs. The first setup is the most common and is for internal temperatures higher than 78 degrees. This setup has you hanging your vent system on the top of the inside of your tent using a hanging pole. Understand that a complete setup consists of a carbon filter connected to an inline fan connected to a duct that is going through a vent on the top of your tent. Based on where your vent is, you want to choose where to hang your fan and carbon filter. Depending on how you place it, it's entirely possible to have no duct at all and connect your inline fan straight into a tent vent. Hot air rises and what happens in this setup is hot air is being fanned out through the top of your tent. Cool air will be sucked in from an open vent on the bottom of your tent. You want to put your dust filter on the outside of your carbon filter so it catches all the dust trying to go in. The first thing you want to do is place a hanging pole parallel to the outside pole that you're hanging your system on. Slide the hanging pole as close to the other. Next, we will be hanging up the straps for your carbon filter. Hold the buckle just like this so you can see all three slots facing you and the strap is going from behind. Pull the strap all the way down and loop it back up ensuring there is no twists. Now push that end of the strap behind the back of the outside pole you're hanging from and when you have enough pushed in, pull it from above and over the top hanging pole as well. Then take the end of the strap and put it through the center slot of the buckle and pull it out about three inches. Then pull it up and into the top slot and pull it from behind. Once it's in, pull on the bottom of the strap to make sure it's secure. You could tighten the strap by holding the buckle secure and pulling hard on the loose end of the strap. Tighten it enough so that your carbon filter will fit in loosely, but not too loose. Now, do the same thing with the second strap and carefully place the carbon filter inside the two belts. Next, you want to hang your inline fan right next to your carbon filter and we'll be using rope clip hangers. The first thing you want to do is pull out enough slack on the hangers so you have about three feet of line. Take a clip without the pulley attached and push it behind the back of the pole you're hanging from, up, above, and over the second hanging pole and let the clip drape down. Do the same exact thing for the second hanger and even the levels. Now depending on your inline fan, 
you may have a mounting piece that needs to be attached. It's in this gap that you're going to slide the two clips through. Make sure you're hanging your fan up in the direction where the arrow is pointing away from the carbon filter and pointing towards the vent. This just means that air is blowing out of your tent. Hold the inline fan with one hand, make sure the clip goes through that slot and clip the clip to the clip that's attached to the pulley. Do this with the second clip, and now you could let your inline fan hang. Raise the inline fan by pulling the loose rope ends until your fan is level with your carbon filter. Once it's connected, you could lift the whole system up even more to be as high as possible. You could further seal the connection with aluminum tape if you have it. Next, drop one end of the duct through the top vent. Attach this end to the open end of the fan, and again, you can reinforce this with some tape. Now organize all your cords and plug your fan in. If you have a probe, place it near where your plants would be, and now open up a vent that's as close as possible to the floor, and that's where the cooler air will get sucked in. The last step is to tighten up all of the other vents in your tent, and that's all for this setup. The two other ways of setting up airflow is for tents that are cooler than 78 degrees. The only difference is whether you're placing this setup inside your tent or outside your tent. Both setups have the carbon filter on the floor with the inline fan stacked on top like a totem pole and it's either blowing or sucking air out of your tent. If you have a small grow tent with limited space, you want to place your fan outside of your tent. First, place your dust filter on the inside of your carbon filter. You just roll it up like a pole, stick it in the center, and put your hand on the inside to spread it out. Next, stack your inline fan on top and have it so that the arrow on the fan is pointing down. Since the weight of the fan on top of the carbon filter is heavy, you don't really need to seal this part. Next, place your duct on top and you could reinforce this with some aluminum tape if you have it. Now place this setup somewhere safe outside of your tent, on the floor, and close enough so that the other end of the duct could be connected to your lowest vent. Secure your duct to the vent by tightening the two vent drawstrings. Organize all of your cords and plug your fan in. If you have a probe, place it near where your plants would be. Now, open up a vent on the top of your tent and tighten all other vents and now you have hot air getting sucked in from the top and cool air getting blown out from the bottom. The last setup is for temperatures cooler than 78 degrees but with enough space to place your fan setup on the floor inside your tent. With this setup, you're placing your dust filter on the outside of your carbon filter. Then you're stacking your inline fan on top with the arrow pointing up. The weight of the fan will make sure the connection is snug so you don't need to reinforce this part. Next, connect the duct to the other end of the fan 
and you could reinforce this connection with some tape. Place your setup on the most convenient location on the floor inside your tent and then connect the other end of the duct to the closest vent. Secure the duct by tightening the vent's drawstrings and organize all your cords and plug your fan in. If you have a probe, place it near where your plants would be. Now open up a vent on the top of your tent and tighten all other vents and now you have hot air getting sucked in and cool air getting blown out. Next, you'll wanna install an internal fan to improve air circulation within your tent. These all have different mounts and most of them could be clipped or hung on a pole. Place them where they're blowing air near your plants, but not directly at them. So you'll notice all the leaves slightly vibrating. Now that you have your tent set up, connect your light to a timed outlet or surge. Turn the dial so the arrow matches your current time, then push the tabs down on all the hours you want your lights on. Then plug your outlet to an outlet. The very last step is to check for light leaks by turning your lights off in the room while the lights in your grow tent are on. Reinforce any spots that are leaking light to prevent your plants from getting additional stress. So that's it. That is everything you need to know about setting up your grow tent kit.